Hey everybody, we're doing a video today about the topic of Adventists in Europe. Father God, help us to understand your word, put it in practice, and see the truth in the name of Jesus. Amen. There are questions all over the world, and there are differences. I take a quote from Ellen G. White, she says, some whole conferences, some whole churches will be lost, will be destroyed. What does it mean? Well, it means that the influence on some people in churches, the pastors, elders, make it so that the members, most people, owners, just follow the leaders. And what says, the spirituality of the members cannot go higher than the teacher. I think she just said that somewhere. So it means that if the leadership is super wicked, they have a very low spirituality, the rest of the members will follow. Why? Because most people don't think for themselves. Most people don't think for themselves, they just follow the trend. Like the sheep follow the group. Human beings are not better. So I'm not saying that there's no good Adventists in Europe. What I'm saying is there are differences. So the main difference, and the main reason why you make it so that America is much better in Christian, Christianity, and there's many, I mean, we know the Bible prophecy because you know me. Me, I take one part and explain something, and you have to take the whole truth. You have to go and watch all the rest of my videos to understand the whole truth. We know Revelation 14 says America will fall very soon. They will become very wicked. They will join the Pope and then they will bring in the end of the world. But this video, the topic is differences between America and here. So the main reason why Christianity is so weak in Europe and so powerful in America is when, when someone preaches a sermon in America, when the pastor is led from God, the members and the people know it is God speaking. I go to North Europe, France, other countries, Spain. Most people that go listen to sermon, they believe in their minds that what they are listening to is a man's opinion. So that makes the whole difference and it's very, very, very important because if you don't believe that a man led by God, God is speaking to him, there's no point of your question. It is not, you're not a question. I made, I make the analogy of, uh, you put water in a glass and you put some lemon in it. The water will have the taste of lemon, but it's not going to be lemon, it's going to be just the taste of it. For me, Christianity in Europe, and not every country, but uh, you go mostly France, especially Western Europe, North Europe too, I've seen that in the Baltic countries, uh, that uh, it's atheism with the flavor of Christianity, atheism with the flavor of Christianity. And people that live, uh, I see that the, the worst country is France. The worst country up for Christianity is France. If you want to go to a place where there's almost no real Christians, you go to France. You will not find or very, very hardly find any question, any true question, as the Bible describes them. And I think that also in North Europe and the countries, other countries, the thing is that because in Europe, most people believe, believe that there's no such thing as absolute truth. There's no such thing as God inspiring someone. There's no such thing as truth and error. Most people in Europe believe there's only opinions. 
So when someone goes to this basic belief, they cannot attain to truth. They cannot attain to real Christianity. It is impossible. And what says when a minister is led by God and preaches a sermon behind the pulpit, the words that are going out of his mouth, they're from God himself. When a minister is led by God and preaches a sermon, ideas are coming to his mind. Many ideas. These are given by angels. So if you don't believe that God speaks to people, if you don't believe that God gives some people messages to give to the world, then your Christianity is not, uh, is, uh, it's just atheism. This is the number one reason. We can go more deeper in this one, but this is super important. Uh, I don't know if some of you are going to understand the meaning and the reason and the importance of what I just said. I mean, this is everything. Because if you don't believe there's absolute truth, if you believe there's only opinion, then you cannot go anywhere. When we speak about colors, music, food, there's different tastes. So different tastes, but there's no absolute, it's not absolute topic, right? I can like some kind of music, I can like apples, I can like pears, but this is personal taste this is personal opinion so when the topic is not absolute there's opinions when the topic is absolute opinions does not matter at all let's say I say uh, the capital of France is Paris right can opinion come into play in this statement? No. Why? Because this is absolute truth. So there is a time to speak about opinions, feelings, impressions. These come when you talk about taste, about colors, about music, about food, all these topics. When any time you speak about absolute topics, opinions have no play into it and this is a big problem because many many people I talk to thousands of people on YouTube and all over the place and I realize maybe 95% of people on the world do not understand that their opinion does not matter when we talk about absolute topics these kind of people they can talk all their lives about the personal opinion but it does not matter because this is absolute topic if we say most human beings have two legs, question, does personal opinion have any say in this statement? No, because it's proven, you can prove, test, demonstrate, most human beings have two legs. Most human beings have two ears. Most cars have four wheels. Most houses have beds inside. Most computers have a keyboard. See, so there's absolute topics. Absolute topics, if you try to bring in opinion, it does not, this opinion does not matter because you can prove, test, demonstrate. So, the Bible is the Bible opinion or is the Bible absolute? Bible is absolute. Is creation absolute or opinion? Creation is absolute. Is the end of the world coming, heaven or hell? Is it absolute or is opinion? Heaven or hell is absolute. So whatever people come in and their opinions come into play in, to, in these topics, it, it has no say, it has no power, it has nothing to say in it because it is an absolute topic. If someone can come up with an opinion and say, oh, I believe that most human beings have five legs, five legs, right? They're going to write a blog about it. They're going to make clubs all over the world. And millions of people, they're going to come in. They're going to start to believe that most human beings have five legs. They can be, they, they can have many followers around the world, but 
how many followers they have doesn't matter because they cannot test, they cannot prove, they cannot demonstrate that most human beings have five legs. Someone can believe truly in the inner soul that most human beings have five legs. This will never make it true. So we can understand that someone can be very convinced, convicted of what they believe. Someone can be really sure of what they believe. Someone can uh, believe that the lie they have is truth. It will never make it true. So when someone comes to church or reads the Bible, and they come and they believe that what they hear is the words of a man, these words will not change their lives. This word will not do anything to them. And they are disrespecting God. They are not understanding the power of the Creator. They do not see that God chose for some human beings to be inspired and led by him to give messages to the world. Why does God choose human, so many human beings to give messages to the world? Why? Because. Because God is God. So if God is the creator, he can do whatever he wishes. If you have, if you have children playing with Lego, they can make the castle and they can destroy the castle. Why? Because the game belongs to them and they do whatever they want with the game. God is the creator of everything, so he does whatever he wants with his creation. If God has a message to give, he can make speakers come on the earth, he can make angels talk for him, he can use all the donkeys of the earth to talk for him, he can give mouses to the stones to talk to him. Or he can choose some people on earth to talk for him. God could speak himself from heaven. Oh, but that would not be good for human beings. Why would, not, why would it not be good for human beings? Because men need to exercise faith. There is a verse that says, when the Son of Man cometh on the earth, shall he find faith on the earth. If God appears in the sky and talks to him, everybody hears him, people will not be uh, need to exercise faith in the invisible God. Because what you see is no more faith. So what you see is the more faith, it means that one of the qualities God requires for people to make it to heaven is faith. So God has to remain invisible for human beings to develop one of the qualities God requires for anybody to go to heaven. So the way God chose it, he chose some human beings. The Bible says, holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. The words of the Bible, they are absolute, given by God. When God brings people to talk for him, the ideas, the words coming from the mouths of these people, the ideas are divinely inspired. Does it mean that 
any preacher in the world is led by God. No. In fact, in Europe and other places of the world, most people are not inspired of God at all. So, it is a big problem. When you come to Europe, like France or other countries, and you go see members of the church who are not converted. And these are people who don't believe in such a thing as absolute. So, the, they go to church as a social club. Because they don't believe they're going to listen to the word of God. They go to church and they come to listen to a man's opinion. Like they would go to a Rotary Club. Like they would go to a political rally. Like they would go to a concert. Or like they would listen to the news on television. For most members, at the Adventist Church in Europe, they come to church as, they, as if they would come to listen to the news. Right? They come and they truly believe they come to listen to a man's opinion. So, if some of you listening are from America, you will be amazed to listen to what I just said. Right? If you come to America and you're a Christian from America, Nobody in America believes that the Bible or a preacher inspired by God will give his own opinion, right? It is impossible. Nobody in America believes a preacher gives his own opinion. If you are from Europe and you're Christian, Adventist, maybe, and you listen to this video, and you, you will be amazed to understand that in America over there, every Christian believes in absolute and they believe that when they come to church, they listen to the voice of God. So we can conclude that atheism is very, very present in society in Europe and in the churches. And I would conclude that most people in Europe, Adventists uh, included, are not converted. Not converted. Difference number two is the knowledge of the Bible is very low in Europe compared to America. And I don't say America only. I mean Central America, the, the West Indies, South America. These, this is the continent for God because I travel all over the world and this is where you have the most Christians in the world is North America, Brazil, Argentina, Cuba, Peru, all these places. You have 90% of people, maybe more, are believe the Bible and they're not just like uh, 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 faith believe or just baptism when they were born. Most people know the Bible. When I go to America to church, there will be many people in the church that know the Bible very, very well. You can go, uh, you could go to Jamaica, for example. Jamaica, some young people, they will turn the book of Revelation, the book of Daniel, Zechariah, upside down, and they know to, how to find the verses. I come to Europe. And even the pastors and elders do not know how to answer the basic, difficult verses of the Bible. Like, I asked some members in Europe, do you know to answer Colossians 2, where it says, let no one judge you about Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come. And I asked here in Europe, and uh, the people say, I don't know. Whoa, you don't know? Everybody knows that to answer that in America. And this is just basic teachings of the Bible. I went here to some churches uh, in Europe too, and uh, I teach, I tell them about the Revelation 9, the angry horse of Islam, which is basic Adventist teaching, and even the pastors don't know this teaching. So it is 
it is the, the, the so this is the difference number two. The knowledge of the Bible is greatly, greatly different between America, which is very, very high, and Europe, which is very, very low. So this is the sad conclusion that the Adventist Church here, Christianity, is mostly a social club. Social club. People come to meet others. They're not really Christians. I was in Estonia uh, last month and I come out from the church and the girl comes out with me and then I ask her number and then she said something that nobody in America will ever say. No woman in America will ever ever say such a thing. It's not the bad thing she said, but it's a thing that tells me she's not a Christian, she's not a converted. So I hope you're not listening to that, but this is, uh, this is constatation and tell telling, and this is truth. Preaching truth is helping people come closer to Jesus. She said, oh, but I do not know you. Okay, she said, I don't know you, but do you know that in America, nobody will ever say that? Because in America, when you become a Christian, you know that everybody knows each other on earth, that you're children of God and you're from the same family. So there's no differences. So this is such a thing. This is like if you go to a social club, this is something someone will say you go to a club or a bingo club or something. OK, or, 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 or a discotheque, you go to a discotheque, you go to the to party at night. This is someone will say such a thing. But if you belong to the people of God at the end times, and then you all knit that together, and the Bible says, come close together. Uh, and why says we need to press together, press together, press together. We need, we are here to help each other to be ready for the end times. See, this person is not understanding the basic teachings of the Bible. <laughs> and in America, no women and nobody will ever, ever, ever such a thing because it is super stupid as for a Christian in America to make such a statement. But I'm not saying America is good because, you know, uh, since the Obama administration, Christianity is on a downfall over there. And as 20 years ago, the knowledge of the world was super high. Now there's a big problem. People are becoming atheists. The absolute truth of before, now people believe it is no more. And people believe their own opinions. Their own feelings. Their impressions. But if you trust your own impressions, you are led by the angel that fell from heaven. His name is Lucifer, also called Satan, the deceiver. This is who you are led by, if you trust your, your feelings. If you want to go to a country where people are led by their impressions, where they feel in their minds, and, this, and they don't want to believe the Bible, yet they believe the, what they feel deep down in their minds, and they're led by evil spirits, you go to France. How do I know? Because I have a massage business over there. And every week, maybe five, six, seven, ten people come to my house or they call me. And I know when they come, they've been led by evil spirits. They led, they, the mind is led, their emotions, the feelings, everything in their own in, in muscle is led by evil angels directing them to feel such a way, to feel different ways. If you are a Christian, you're not led by your emotions. If you're a Christian, you're led by principles. When God says you love, you love whatever is the situation. When God says you help, you help whatever the situation. You're not led by the circumstances. You're, uh, if you're led by, by feelings, sometimes you feel like loving, sometimes you don't feel like loving. Sometimes you feel like helping, sometimes you don't feel like helping. When you're a Christian, you help every time. You love every time. Whatever the feeling you have, doesn't matter. You're led by your principle. 
But most people are led by emotions. Oh, today I feel good, so I'm going to help someone. Oh, today I don't feel good, so I'm not going to... No, this is stupidity. You're led by evil spirits. People of God are led by principles, and they follow the truth. People who don't like the truth, so they're liars, they're led by evil spirits and the devil. Whatever the feelings of Satan he wants to put in them, that's what they do. And in fact, you can go to cities. I'm sorry to repeat this, but when you go to France, I lived there a few years, you come out on the street in the morning and you feel there's a miasma in the air filling the city. People don't know that. The Bible says Satan is the prince of the power of the air. Satan is the prince of the power of the air. Satan brings into cities and countries feelings, emotions, what people should feel today. They should feel angry today. They should feel happy today. They should feel sad today. They should feel gangster today. And you go to France and you come out, I come out on the street sometimes, and everybody is feeling the same way. <laughs> you come out the next day on the streets and everybody is feeling a different way. Because if you're not led by God, you are led by the devil. There is no middle ground. Either God is for you or the devil is for you. Either you're led by good angels or you can be led by evil angels. There is no middle ground. Nobody is in between. How do we know? Because Jesus says, if you are not for me, Jesus says, you are against me. Jesus said, if you are not for me, if you are not for God, you are against God. If you are against God, then who are you for? If you are against God, you are for Satan. But most people in the world today believe, oh, I don't believe in God. I don't believe in Satan. I have my own opinions, my own belief. No. No, if you are not from God, you belong to the army of Satan. If there's a war, and there are two armies, if you are not for the first army, then you are for the other army. There is no middle ground. It is a battle. Everybody on earth belongs to Satan or they belong to God. There is no middle ground. If you do not make the effort to know Jesus, to read the Bible and to follow him, if it's too difficult for you to do that, if it's too difficult for you to download the Bible, if it's too difficult for you to spend time in prayer every day, if it's too difficult for you to read the books he has sent of his prophet, Elenji White, then you do not belong to God. Heaven is not for you, and you will burn in hell. So number one, we saw the difference. People don't believe absolute truth. They don't Christians. Only people who believe that God is absolute, the Bible is absolute, and his messengers' words are absolute, they are led by God, and they can be benefited by the truth. If the words you listen to, to in church are not from God, then you're in a social club. You just go to a club, you listen to some man's opinion, and you're wasting your time. Number two, the knowledge of the Bible is very high in America. And we saw there's big problems coming in America now. Many people don't believe in God, 
And people, they believe the same thing as opinions now. And the atheism that started in France and they went to Ru <coughs> Russia after. And then he's <coughs> <coughs> now in America because of Obama. So the world is now influenced by some of these people that are leading the world in believing their own opinions. Even when it comes to absolute topics, people, they bring in their own opinions. It's a waste of time. It is stupidity. And this does not, it's not worth anything. And people are playing with God. Like if I say this is a fun, and you say this is a PC, your opinion doesn't matter. You can, we can debate. We can debate for five hours. You say this is a car. I say this is a fun. And you say this is a car. You can believe all you want. This is a car. It is not a car. Right? Your opinions have, opinions have nothing to say. They have no weight. They're worth nothing when it comes to absolute truth. So this topic is very important because uh, my people have perished for lack of knowledge. If you don't have the knowledge of the Bible, you're going to perish. God has sent a prophet. Her name is Ellen G. White. Her books are on the internet. She prophesied 9-11. She prophesied the destruction of San Francisco. She prophesied the two world wars. She prophesied everything for the end of the world. So, is she true or not true? But you have to go, you have to read the books and find out for yourself. Get your knowledge you need. We need knowledge to stand in the end time. Ellen White said, only those who have fortified their minds to the, to the scriptures will stand in the last great conflict. So these two, why is it so important? Because I don't want to go to church and be a social club. I mean, it's a waste of time. People are there. I mean, it's okay to meet people. We can meet, we can enjoy everything. But we're there to go and listen to the word of God. We are there to listen to absolute truth. There's utmost respect when we listen to the word of God because God is sending his angels to inspire the mind of his minister so we can be changed and transformed by the word of God. If you go to a social club, a social club is not going to help you for anything because we need to know that the such thing as absolute truth. And if, if the church is wicked, then it's going to be rejected by God. And God is not here to lead a church which is wicked. God is the end time church. This church needs to be faithful to God all the way to the end. And if we are not giving the message of God, God will reject those who are not giving this message. Right? This message gives opposition. There's a lot of opposition for those who speak this message. So this is what God is saying that in the end times there's going to be a lot of persecution. And, uh, but either, either let, let's say you work on a team, a soccer team. If you do soccer and you want to be on a team of soccer, then just do it all the way. There's no point in doing something halfway. It's stupid. Right? Either we for God or for Satan. Don't, we don't play half because it doesn't matter. It's not very beneficial for nobody. Okay, thank you. Okay, Father God, help us understand Jesus. Amen.